Hello and welcome to step 4 of the 12 steps to the Navier-Stokes equations originally taught from Marina Barbara. In this um, episode we will look at the Burgess equations. You can look at the Bear Burgess equations on the wiki page and understand where it's used. Um, yeah, for the, for the difference between the step 4 and step 3 and the previous one, it is that you don't use the wave uh, anymore as a function but a more complicated one, like a sawtooth function, you can look at it right here. But um, for you to understand or the importance of um, dealing with these equations is you have to use the symbolic math toolbox in MATLAB or the SymPy um, toolbox in Python. So we will be using them and I will explain what each steps, step does. So we will start implementing phi and phi is right here. I have to use my new annotation software. It's a real cool program. It's called uh, Ink2Go. And you have here the phi parameter which is differentiated in here. And in order to don't make a uh, mistake in doing a differentiation in the function phi, you can use the symbolic math toolbox. So we will implement phi, then go further and differentiate phi function, it's called diff, um, depending on phi, and then we will implement our u function. Another thing I want to point out as well is that later on we will have um, time and space uh, um, discretization and therefore we have to do two for loops. Um, I don't know if I really taught that in the previous lectures, but in that case I just want to quickly explain that to you. So let's say I have a time which is time zero, and then I have a discretization of a number of dots. They all have the same distance, the x. And now I want to calculate the values of, of those dots at the next time step. And the thing is that for this I need, um, for one variable I need both i minus 1 and i plus 1. So those variables I need. Problematic it will be here and here. Because what is this pointing to? Right? So you have to specify the boundary conditions at each side um, specially. And we have here a periodic function, so we have something like um, this here. And now that value equals that value, so this will get painted to here. Uh, to here. Yeah, to here. So those values are then the same. We'll see that later. That's also just for a periodic function and if number of nodes are at uh, the, 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 the distance is in that length that the periodic function matches its wavelength. Okay, that's just for it. And now we want to start implementing. So, we will be starting with um, the clear all command, which makes sure that I have no rubbish uh, from previous simulations. Then I will go and Im initiate the symbolic math toolbox by declaring sims x new t. So x new and t are now understood as formulas, symbolic formulas, not as variables anymore. And now I can start implementing phi, and I did that previously, so I just copy that over. It's just um, implementing the x function, then the exp exponential function and uh, the values. Now here t and x and u are the symbolic expressions, and now I can differentiate it. Phi prime, I will call that variable, or in this case it's, yeah, it's a variable, but it will get filled with a symbolic um, expression phi prime equals the differentiation of phi 
uh, with respect to x. Okay, now I have phi prime and I now implement u sim. u sim because in here it's just a symbolic expression. So I have phi prime. So this I have phi and I differentiate it and now I have to implement u and that's just minus, uh, minus 2 times nu divided by phi. 2 times uh, minus, minus, nu, minus 2 times nu divided by phi multiplicated with phi prime and plus 4. Now I have to go back and uh, do a conversion to a MATLAB function and uh, this, this I will call ufunc equals and the operator is called MATLAB function and I have to input the usim and that's about it. So now I have all the equations I use for my uh, problem. I can um, input the time and local spacing so the first thing is nx equals 101 nodes and t equals 100 time steps nu is a constant in this case 0 0.07 and dx equals 2 times pi, that's the length of the zone, and I divide this with the number of nodes, and x minus 1, minus 1, <laughs> that's my local spacing, and dt, I make it dependent on nu, so depending on the local spacing, that's uh, the more important one, because that gives you um, the assurance that you have the decent time step to your local spacing, as we saw in the late, uh, in the previous video about um, the CFL code condition. Okay, just put in the semicolons. Okay, now uh, we can put in our initialization. So we have t equals zero. And then we have u equals u func and the variables n, u, t, x and u, n equals zeros it's just for memory pre-allocation pre zeros 1 comma n, x so it's a vector of the length n, x and it's filled with zeros, and now I have to do the for loop. So, calculation um, for n equals 1 with step 1 to nt, so that's the time um, loop, and then I have to do the local spacing loop i equals 2 with step 1 to an x minus 1 and two ends in here and now you see that I covered just the space between 2 and nx minus 1 because of the problem I taught to you earlier um, so I will take um, care about uh, take care of the boundary condition on a later time so boundary condition will get be implemented in here and here it will just calculate the, the next values for the uh, for the local spacing it can do um, yeah <laughs> okay now um, you have this un which is your current time step and the next time step will be um, u the function u and you have to copy u into u un in order to just loop over the time so the next time step u, depending on i, will get calculated by um, this formula right here. 
here and you see here those values with un it will be the function un and the function un plus one will be the function u so I did that also once before so I just can copy that right into into it and now we have to take care of the boundary condition so u depending on one equals and now you have to implement all in here again but with um, the states that you have for i it is one so every i gets a one i minus one just draw that quickly again so we we are here at u1 t equals zero t equals one and now we want to calculate i plus one that's okay i equals one and i minus one will get taken to uh, point two here to nx minus one. Okay, so that is translating that to here. i minus 1 is an x minus 1 and i plus 1 is in this case 2 i is 1 and this is an x minus 1 as we have a periodic function you can say that u depending uh, u from an x equals u from 1 now you just have to do the plotting plot x u and in order to see the progression we use the command hold on and also just the semicolons again and in order to be able to see that you have to use the pause command of just 0 0.01 or something like that and then you can we will try that out and we have a failure index exceeds matrix dimensions the, um, with un un equals okay so I looked into it and the error was that x was not defined as a function so if you just run the program and debug it you can see that on this stage new is assigned with 0 0.07, t is 0 and x is just the symbolic and with a symbolic tool it cannot, with a symbolic expression it cannot calculate anything so you have to initialize, initialization. Um, you have to initialize an x. In this case, I will do that with a lint space. Lint space from 0 to 2 times pi with the sub size an x. And now it should run fine. And you can see uh, it was a bit quickly. Let's just increase the pause a little bit. Now you can see um, the function um, converging. And in order to be able to compare it to an analytical solution, we have a um, we have the analytical solution given in the code. This one here, and we can plot the analytical function by just using the command u analytical equals u func um, new n times dt and x. Now just plot 
um, plot x u analytical. The auto complete is done with uh, the tab button. If I didn't set that, then I just see what the file gets. Well, I should have closed it, but it's now iterating again, and here you can see the uh, analytical solution. You also see that the analytical solution and um, the computed one match at the first and the last point, so you see that uh, the boundary conditions were implemented right. Um, you can just switch that off by commenting those two lines off for the boundary condition and run it again. And then you will see that the first one and the last one will get different values and they don't match the analytical solution this way. So this one was implemented right. Yeah, thanks for watching and I hope to see you back soon.